to the basics. Wow. How are you doing with the basics? And if you weren't challenged by anything today, and even if you were, go beyond the basics. Hey man, I'm so proud to be here with the Swift, the South and the West regions of the church. It has been an incredible time just to worship here God together. And of course, I'm very grateful for uh, Tosin and Anna sharing for uh, communion, which really is that you can overcome fear or be overcome by fear. And then of course, we had Aaron come up for a contribution. And again, I mean, guys, wasn't that fire or what? Yeah. I mean, that, that in itself was a sermon. Yeah. Yeah. Your relationship with God, is it a relationship or is it a transaction? <laughs> Have you gotten the kingdom subscription? Wow. And they, of course, love the, love the part about Luke 15, because Jesus, he had the tax collectors and the Pharisees, sorry, tax collectors and sinners, got around him as the inner circle, the Jew close to him. And the outer circle was the Pharisees and teachers of the law. And of course, the reference for the younger one is, of course, the tax collectors and sinners, the ones who squandered the wealth and wide living, while the outer circle, that was the older son, the tax collectors and the, sorry, <laughs> Pharisees and teachers of the law. So, of course, he had his inner circle and his outer circle, the younger and the older son. And again, we just want to give to God for the sake of giving, not because of what we can get from God. The title for the lesson today is Back to the Basics. Back to the Basics. Because in everything, it all starts with the basics, but really, you gotta keep to the basics if you're gonna make it to the very end. And in this church, we have a conviction we do not educate people beyond their obedience. Because people come, let's talk about Melchizedek. Let's talk about Zerubbabel's temple. What is the number three and a half mean in Revelation? How was your quiet time this morning? <laughs> right? Because why do you want to talk about the stuff if you aren't walking with God? So we got to come back to the basics. Let us go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we can start here in the beginning. John 3 verse 1. And it reads, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they're old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised by saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? And of course, when it comes to Nicodemus, he appeared in the scriptures on three different occasions. Here in John 3, he came to Jesus at night. And again, when you read later on in John 7, He's actually starting to take a stand for Jesus. And then finally in John 19, where it is Nicodemus who actually brings myrrh and aloes for Jesus' burial. And those things, they cost a fortune. So again, we see how his appreciation of Jesus, it grew. But here he comes to Jesus at night. Why he did not want to be seen together with Jesus. And again, Jesus, I mean, don't you just love Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. He just gets straight to the point. Appreciate the flattery. You got to be born again. <laughs> you are a teacher, yet you don't have the basics. You got to start all over again wow. from scratch. 
Biblically, for us to be born again, you got to be made into a disciple by another disciple. You got to repent of your sin, which qualifies for baptism, which of course is the water that Jesus is referring to here. And after your sin has been washed away in the waters of baptism, now the Holy Spirit fills you. Amen. So you get water and the Spirit. Yeah. The way Titus 3, 4 to 7 puts it, it says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things He had, we had done, but because of His mercy. Amen. He saved us through the washing of rebirth. And renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured on us, out on us generously. Mm. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Amen. So again, it is not the physical birth, water, that is referenced here, and then rebirth by the Spirit. But, in fact, it is the rebirth through water and the Spirit. And of course, we're happy that uh, in uh, the Herded family, we just had a birth. Sean and Dempsey had their second child, Lila May. And of course, the mom is recovering uh, from, the, uh, from the pregnancy. The question is, can you find your conversion in the Bible? Mm. If you cannot, you should be very concerned. Mm. If you go, I was baptized as an infant, that is not found in the Bible. Yeah. If you go, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that's not a phrase that appears in the Bible. Romans 10.9 doesn't even say, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It is written to the church in Rome, the disciples, Preach. who Paul calls brothers and sisters. Preach, so Paul is addressing the Jews like a faith in Christ Preach. in Romans 10. So again, you got to read scripture in context. In the Bible, you don't have individuals accepting Jesus as the Lord and Savior. That is denominational Christianity. That is not true biblical Preach. Christianity. Preach. What you find in the Bible is disciples. Be people becoming disciples. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And you see that Nicodemus, he did not accept that message at this point. Do I have to go back into my mother? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> Like, don't be prideful towards Jesus, whom you claim is a teacher who has come from God. Wow. You see, the reason why religious people do not become disciples is pride. Yes. You need to be born again. Ah, I, I've already, you know, no, no, no. Pride. You need to be born again. And perhaps you need to be humbled by life a bit more before you actually get humble enough to accept the message to be Born again. Come on, bro. So the question is, have you started? Because when you're born again, that's actually when you start the journey. Yeah. Baptism isn't the end, it's really the beginning. Yeah. That's when you just get going as a disciple. Amen. But then from that moment on, you gotta stick to the basics. Yeah. You gotta hold on to the basics. Come on, and that is the first point daily basics. Come on, bro. Now for me, uh, I'm, I was born in uh, 1987, mm. back when the dinosaurs uh, roamed the earth. <laughs> and uh, and I, I used to play what is called uh, Russian billiards, okay? People go, oh, you mean Russian roulette? And no, not Russian roulette, bro. That's not at all what I'm talking about. Like billiards, cue sports, you know. Never tried Russian roulette, that probably would not have gone well. Uh, but again, I used to play the game semi-professionally. Uh, on my best tournament, I, I came out at the top of my group uh, of qualifiers. And uh, in the finals, I lost to player number eight in Estonia on the final day. And uh, maybe in heaven, I will have a Russian billiards table because I gave it up to become a disciple, amen. But again, I knew that when I started missing shots, it's because I started mis uh, make, uh, messing up the basics. So for example, when you go down to the sh shot and the, and the reaction is to jump up or move your head when you, when you take the shot. But think about it, the balance is in the head. So when you move your head, you mess up the balance and you miss the shot. Mm. The way you approach the table, you gotta take a straight line, you know, get, get in position. You don't wanna rush the shot. Uh, the way you hold your wrist, I mean, there is a lot that goes into it. But again, when the basics are off, you start missing things. Yeah. And that is true for us as disciples as well. Yeah. <laughs> because when we start messing up the basics, 
things start falling apart. Yeah. So you gotta have the basics and you gotta hold on to the basics. Yeah. So first point, daily basics. Let us go to Luke 11. Let's go, bro. Come on, bro. All right, come on. Daily basics. And of course, what you do daily shows who you really are. Yeah. Luke 11, daily prayer, daily relationship, not interaction, amen, or transaction, with God. Amen. Come on, bro. And it says in Luke 11, verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Amen. And lead us not into temptation. And of course, Jesus, he had a prayer spot. He's recognized for praying at the Garden of Gethsemane. So the question is to us, do you have a prayer spot? A place where you know you can spend time with God. That is your spot. I know that our bro brother Paul T, he likes praying in cemeteries, amen? <laughs> because you get just some, some lonely time, you know, there's not many people walking around. Uh, and, you know, I actually also found an awesome spot at the graveyard. Why? Because it has like this enclosed area in the middle with bushes on the four sides. So, of course, not many people go to the graveyard and even, even fewer people go into that area. So, basically, I know any time of the day I can go there and I can have a solitary time with God. Where I'm not going to be disturbed by anybody else. So, we need to have a prayer spot. And it says, when he finished. So, the question is, do you finish your prayers? Mm. Sometimes we start praying and it finished, but they're actually not done. There's like so much more in the heart. Mm -hmm. So we got to finish our prayers. And sometimes I go out to pray and it's like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I, I pray for everything on my heart. It's, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm finished. Mm -hmm. Do you finish your prayers? And of course, prayer is amazing because prayer really, it changes you. Yeah. And now Jesus' point was never to pray with those exact words. Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, you know, because that's a mantra. That's not a relationship. Yeah. Whereas it says, Father, that's how close you get to be to your Father in heaven and to have a genuine relationship with God. There is a time for praising God, hallowed be your name. Yep. Hallowed means holy. Yep. There is a place your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Yeah. There is a time to ask God for things. And again, what is prayer? It is daily bread, mm. hence daily prayer. I don't know how often you guys like to eat. Nah. Probably, probably a few times a day. Yeah. Maybe you stick to just one, okay? Sweet. For most of us, we, we kind of want more than that. How about prayer? Mm. How often do you pray to God? Forgive us our sins. There is a time to pray for that. And lead us not into temptation, because God has the power to do whatever he desires. Amen. To submit to God. And again, prayer, it changes you. Yes. I mean, for me, I'm a, I'm a wicked guy. So I, I just need God. Yeah. Because, you know, without God, I'm just me. And that's not pretty. Mm -hmm. So I, I need God. Yeah. I have evil thoughts. Yeah. I have lustful thoughts. Mm -hmm. And like when I see it's like, why am I so messed up? And I say, aha, I haven't been praying. Mm -hmm. And even this, this past, past Friday, going to the campus Devo, uh, I had a great prayer in the afternoon. And like my, my mindset was so different. And I was like, ah, I just see the power of prayer when you actually do it. Not just the morning one, but also really to, yeah. to walk closely on, with God. Prayer works. I don't know how. It's supernatural. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't need to know how a car works in order to drive it. <laughs> but I drive it, and it's awesome. So prayer works. But we got to ask ourselves, has prayer stopped you from sinning, or has sin stopped you from praying? Wow. Do you pray? How much do you pray? Do you pray an hour a day? Mm. When you only pray for yourself, that can seem like a feat. Ah, oh, can I really pray for myself one hour? Y you can, yeah. But there is so, so many things to pray about. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
your brothers, your sisters, churches worldwide. I mean, there's wars going on, Ukraine. There are so many things to pray about. So when you stop focusing on yourself, suddenly you have so many things to pray about. Mm -hmm. And the question is, if you're not spending time with God on earth, why would you go to heaven? Exactly. Because heaven is going to be all about spending time with God. Yeah. So if you don't enjoy the time you get to spend with God on earth, why would you do it in heaven? Why would you want to be there? So prayer is daily bread. Acts 17. Come on, Catherine. Acts 17. Come on, bro. This is last time. <laughs> Acts 17, it says in verse 10 to 12. Come on, bro. And it reads, as soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. But they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Anybody who has fallen away from God, they had one thing in common, they stopped having good quiet times, yeah. times with God. And again, when we aren't walking with God, we're just going to be like us. Mm -hmm. When we walk with God, we're going to be more like Jesus mm -hmm. and less like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And really prayer and reading the scripture, they are a 50-50 thing. Yeah. Because a lot of people, yeah, I pray to God, I pray to God, I pray to God. Well, do you read the Bible? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it's basically a monologue and you're telling God, okay, I do all the talking here, you keep quiet. Wow. But then God wants to speak to you through the scriptures. So we got to let God speak to us every day. You pray to him. You express what's on your heart, and God speaks to you through the word, suddenly you have a working relationship. How motivated are you to spend time with God? In Psalm 42, 1 and 2, it reads, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? When can I go? Not, when do I have to go? Must I go? That time again. How is relationship going? Because if you are in a close relationship with somebody, you long to spend time with them. Do I have to talk to my wife again? I mean, that's, that's whew, how are things going. For me, I usually feel I don't get enough time with my wife. And that should be our relationship with God. Luke 9, 23. Come on, Casper. Luke 9, 23. Daily self-denial and daily evangelism. Come on. Come on. Daily self-denial and daily evangelism. Back to the basics. Let's go, bro. 23. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the cross daily and follow me. Come on. So daily self-denial. Yeah. Which is doing the right thing even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Sometimes you will feel, I love, I just want to love people. Sometimes like, I don't want to love anybody. Yeah. But then you do what is right. Yeah. You deny yourself. Amen. I'm Michonne and MJ. They are not getting very much sleep round about now. Amen. What do you do then? Be quiet, baby. No. I need to sleep. <laughs> no, you deny yourself. Yeah. You take care of the baby. And the baby won't care actually how you feel. <laughs> I just need my milk and a diaper changed, you know, and, and then I'm back to sleep. Right? The life of a follower of Christ is a life of self-denial. And really, how can you call others to self-denial if you're living a life of self-indulgence? Preach, bro. How to have a heart of self-denial? How about fasting? Preach. Because Jesus says, when you fast. doesn't say, if you fast. Preach. Come when? On, when is the last time you fasted? Preach. Great question. For the Swedish mission team, we, we fast on Fridays from food. And we also fast from something except the day we have baptisms. Amen. And it's, and it's awesome because it shows you actually how much less you need than what you actually think. And it teaches you life of self-denial. And then, of course, it says... Uh, 
and take up the cross daily. So how often do we follow Jesus? Daily. Mark 1, 17 says, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people, or I will make you fishes of men. So if a follower of Jesus is a fisher of men, how often do we fish for people? Daily. That means every day except for Sunday, right? No. Have a great time evangelizing today. We also see this in Acts 5, 42, day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Also, Acts 2, 47, and the Lord added to the number daily those who are being saved. Yeah. Implication, every day, disciples were made. Yeah. So Jesus wants to make it clear from the get-go, if you're going to be following me, your life is not going to be about you anymore. Yeah. It's about what you can give wow. to, to others. Because if you aren't focused on others, what are you focused on yourself? Yeah. So that is actually how you stay strong spiritually. Evangelism. Being in Bible studies that actually helps you to stay faithful. I don't want to encourage you. Because we all feel timid at times. Yeah. Unmotivated. This week set up three times with our disciples to go and evangelize together. Amen. Just to support each other. Do what God is calling us to do. Amen. Acts 2, 46. Meeting God and disciples daily. Ooh, quiet on this point. I guess we don't really enjoy the time with other disciples. Dawson loves it. Okay, that's good. Sounds like we need to spend more time together. Okay, it says Acts 2, 46. Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Yep. Because what is a church? A family. Yes, and we may not always have an official church meeting every day. But again, meeting the disciples because they are family. Mm. And because you enjoy the time together. Mm. I saw Naomi on the campus the other day. And uh, Tosin and Naomi, I mean, they had shared faith with more than 600 people this past Wednesday. Between the two of them. That's pretty good, right? Wow. Pretty, pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent. Wow. Come on, guys. And, and I told Naomi, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out to pray. And Naomi asked me about it. Don't they always do it? It's like, no, I, I do it when I need it. And Naomi said, well, I, I've developed a conviction to do it even when I don't need it. Come on, I'm wow. like, good point. <laughs> so that's something I want to take to heart, uh, to take the time to pray in the afternoon. And then... Jen was sitting there, and then Naomi got discipled by Jen about something. And, you know, it's awesome. That's just what happens when you're together as disciples, okay? Okay, second point. Non-daily basics. You have daily basics, and you have non-daily basics. James 5. James 5, 16. Starting to wrap, wrap up soon here. James 5. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> James 5, it says verse 16. And it says, therefore, confess your sins Amen. to each other. Yeah. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. Yes. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. No confession. Mm. It doesn't say it has to be daily. But if you're honest with yourself... I mean, when can you say at the end of the day, today I live like Jesus Christ? <laughs> like, are, are you being honest with yourself? If you think that, you're probably out of touch with where things are at with you. I mean, for me yesterday, I had to apologize to the Gordines. Because I was irritated about the situation and they went off an assumption. And again, it really hurt them. So you got to apologize. And uh, thank you for your forgiveness. We got to be reconciled. So again, we sin, but then we got to confess. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the blood of Christ continues to purify us from Amen. all unrighteousness. Amen. As Paul T. would put it, don't stress, confess. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, you just get all weird in fellowship. How are you doing? <laughs> you just get weird. Yeah, there's a lot of weirdness going on. I mean, there is no sin of weirdness, but sin will make you weird. Be sure of that. Because you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. The solution, simple, confess and repent. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 16. Come on. 
1 Corinthians 16. Come on, bro. Back to the basics. Back to the basics. Giving. 1 Corinthians 16. Verse 1. Now, about the collection for the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you, not some, amen, each one of you, each one of you, amen. each one of you in the back, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. So again, weekly giving to God. And again, I have strong convictions about giving. Um, because I really don't want to think, okay, why is God not blessing me? Is it because I'm holding back? And I'm not giving to God as I should? Like, I, I don't even want the question to be there. Because really, Malachi 3 calls it robbing God. The word tithe means a tenth. So a tenth has always been God's. So when I don't give to God what he sees, I'm robbing God. And really, generosity, for most of us, it goes beyond the 10%. So, so we got to have the heart to give to God. Yeah. Really, I don't do you remember the last time I, I did not give. Um, I remember this, a disciple back in Estonia, and he said, you know, I just give 30% to God immediately. Uh, whenever I get paid, and I'm like, that's a great example. So I, I imitated that for a big part of my discipleship. And the Malachi 3, the whole nation was under a curse because they were not giving their tithes and offerings. Mm. So, so again, that is... Something we have to sort out. And it really has to be a deep conviction yeah. in every one of us. If we aren't tithing, we're robbing God. Yeah. And again, did you give today? Did you give last week? Because it should be a weekly standard, right. basic. Yeah. Meetings of the body, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. That's good, bro. That's Just basics, basic stuff. Hebrews 10. And it says in verse 23. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. As some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And again, it talks about the meetings of the body when we get together as a family. That is Sunday, yes, but not just Sunday. Because, of course, we get together also at different times as a church. We have midweek meetings. We have Bible talks. And each of those serves a purpose. So actually, we need all of them. Sometimes you need to get together as men. We got any men in the house yeah. today? Yeah. And like men, you know, they can get the strongest preaching. And they just straight up, okay... Brothers say, kick me in the face. Yeah. Brothers say, stuff like that, okay? Yeah. Sisters probably don't say that. They, they, they say different kind of things. But again, so we got Sundays, midweeks, Bible talks. And again, it says, do not give up meeting together. Because actually, we need those times. Otherwise, we don't get the encouragement we need. And sometimes you may be doing fine, but somebody else needs you to encourage them. So it's not really even about us only, but it's also what we can give to others. And again, when you get together, no matter how your day has been, and you hear the singing, the fellowship, it's, a, it's an incredible time just to worship God together. Yes. And really, we bring our worship together with us when we meet as a family. So the call today, back to the basics. Mm. How are you doing with the basics? Mm. And if you weren't challenged by anything today, yeah. and even if you were, go beyond the basics. Mm. Acts 4, Barnabas, he sold the field. He put the money at the apostles' feet. Do something extraordinary once you have mastered the basics for God. To God be the glory. Amen.